This is New Home Insights, the John Burns Real Estate Consulting Podcast. I'll be your host, Dean Worley. As the title promises, we're going to bring you insights into everything housing, the latest trends, innovations, observations, and issues of the day. We'll bring in colleagues here at John Burns and also some major industry players from all across the country. This podcast is going to be quick, fun, but also hopefully make you think. So see you here every couple of weeks. Now let's get to it. Welcome to New Home Insights. I'm your host, Dean Worley, the John Burns Real Estate Consulting Podcast about New Home Insights. Today we have Sydney Powell. She manages John Burns Consumer Insights uh, and, and it kind of explores what home buyers are thinking, what they're doing, what they want, what they don't want in a home. Sydney, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Today's topic, we're going to talk about millennials, but more specifically, it's kind of like you know, not so much about what they are as about what they are not, right? Some millennial myths. We're going to myth bust today without science and explosions, though. Well, actually science, but uh, not explosions, right? Are there going to be explosions, Sydney? I should ask you first. I'm, I'm hoping not. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going into, yeah, we're going to kind of debunk uh, things like myths about millennials and, millennials and home buying, their wants, their needs, their hot buttons, and, and really uh, we'll spend some time on how they differ or don't differ from their parents. So let's start with a very widespread myth. At least you're going to tell me it's a myth. I'm not so sure because I have millennials as kids, kind of. Uh, this the idea that millennials are lazy. They're just a bunch of, you know, 20 somethings who have who should have started a family and bought a house by now, just as God intended, but they haven't. Uh, what's what's going on there? Is it is it social? Is it is it is it economic? What's what's going on with with this idea that millennials are lazy? I think that is just what it is. It's just a myth, right? So the earliest millennials right now are reaching a 50% home ownership rate. Um, it's just a little bit later. So they're at 36 years old, which is a little bit older than previous generations, but they still want to own. Um, and, and the reason they're doing it, it's, it's not because of social pressure. You know, it's not because, hey, you have to go do this. You've reached a certain age. Nobody considers, you know, con considers renting a what you would call a non-achievement. Um, nobody's really looking down on anyone for renting. It's just a really practical way of living for people who have a specific kind of income in mind or have a specific kind of lifestyle. Um, I think what you will find is that this particular set, millennials, if you will. Um, are very frugal and very financially conscious. And that really kind of spins that whole idea that they're they're lazy on its head. Uh, they're just very practical when it comes to spending their money. And they don't, so they don't feel like they've not achieved, not accomplished something if they're not buying a home by the time they're in their whatever, late 20s or something like that. No, not at all. And I think that whenever you look at um Again, like you're looking at the the average age is about 36 years old across the nation for whenever a millennial buys their first home. I think when you consider that, it's it's really important to also understand that um, as they're considering making these purchases, it, it's really just about timing. It's about making sure that it's the right house at the right price at the right time. And those are the three things that really go into that decision. And uh, that's what's important to them. And their alternative, I mean, their primary alternative is clearly going to be renting, right? Our, our guests in the the stereotype stereotype of living in mom's basement, uh, there's definitely a lot of that, uh, but, but many of them prefer to rent. Is that fair to say? Well, I think there's a couple of things to consider whenever we're looking at, you know, what's, what's actually that, that key that's keeping them from buying. Again, it's not so much that they're not buying, they're just buying later in life. Um, there's this idea that, you know, student debt is keeping them from buying. Um, and I know that a couple years ago, we did this white paper that said student debt reduced home buying activity by 8%. You know, they're still buying, it's just later in life. A lot of people think millennials just aren't financially savvy, that they don't realize it's something that they, quote, should do. But when you look at what these particular buyers went through during the last recession. These are people who saw loved ones lose everything. And they understand that, you know, if you lose your job after you've bought a home, you can lose your home. You literally can lose everything and go bankrupt. And that's something they don't want to experience on their own. So they're perfectly fine taking time in making that big purchase. 
Okay. So, so, okay. So myth number one, there is not so much lazy. There are a lot of other considerations going on there. How about we, uh, let's, let's look at myth number two, entitlement. You know, it's the idea that Chet, the millennial wants to come into that hot startup and be at least CFO, if not CEO, let's be honest, and then start piling up stocks and, you know, waiting for the IPO, right? That's the kind of idea here. Uh, uh, what's, how, how much of a myth is that? Is it, are there some other considerations going on there for millennials that, that kind of bust this idea that they feel entitled? I think it's less about entitlement and it's definitely more about quality of life, right? I think that's one of the things that is incredibly important to millennials. Um, that includes being able to spend time with your family, spend time with your friends, actually having free time, going out and doing some really cool stuff. You know, this is a group that would rather spend money on an experience instead of stuff. Yeah. So rock climbing. I'm, I'm oh, uh, right. To bet. <laughs> are, I'm, is Olympic that not ambitious skiing. enough? Are we talking? Are we talking trips to maybe go see the Dalai Lama? That kind of thing. I actually know a guy <laughs> that went. <laughs> let me tell you this. I know a guy that went and spent a year in a Buddhist temple. Good well, good. Because wow. he wanted to find this balance in life, and we are of the same age. And shock, I am an older millennial, <laughs> but <laughs> so, um, but. So that was one of the things that that was that was really critically important. Now, married, he's got kids. They bought a beautiful home. He's a very successful person, but he was really focused on finding this wonderful mental spiritual experience that was really important. And I think that's you know not everybody goes to that kind of extreme, yeah. but it is important to to remember that you know experiences really do set. So the, millennials apart from other buyers. So tra travel. So they're setting, so spending their money to some extent. Is that one of the reasons uh, on these experiences, right? So is that one of the reasons why mm -hmm. they're buying later or why they're renting, you know, a little to, to dovetail with the, the previous myth? Well, I think that they may not want to trade in on those experiences, if you will, for a home um, that they think is just a huge investment of time and money, right? You know, something that keeps them from living that life to the fullest. And so it's a huge opportunity, especially when you're thinking about your, your messaging or your marketing, if you're a builder, you know, trying to reach out and say, this is an experience that you want to have and we can give it to you. Um, another thing to consider too with, with this particular group is that they're constantly seeking to move up in life. You know, they're striving to move onwards and upwards and constantly wanting to upgrade the experience. This is very dissimilar from their workaholic parents, you know, people who are mm -hmm. happy going into the same job day after day, year after year decade after decade until it came time to retire. So that's interesting. Are, are they, are they, you know, are they more altruist, altruistic or is there just a different set of ethos going on with millennials or is that overstating it? No, I don't think that's overstating it at all. I think altruism is definitely a bonus when you're thinking about millennials. Um, they value the role that they actually play in the community. How am I contributing? How am I giving back? Um, in fact, 73% of millennials will spend more on a brand that is sustainable. Oh. And even bigger than that, 81% of them expect their favorite brands to make this public declaration of their corporate citizenship oh. in social responsibility. So if you're building a really efficient home, you should really put that out in front of millennials and say, here's something that we're doing that sets us apart. And it speaks to that altruism that they actually expect from brands they purchase with. That's interesting because historically, you know, things like solar, when, when folks were looking at a new home and they're looking at solar, if it wasn't subsidized and, and they, they were reluctant to spend that kind of money up front, and, and the choice typically was based on saving money, not based on doing right by the world. So if, if, if you're right, then that says good things. We, we spoke with CR Hero from Meritage Homes about some of these issues just a, a couple of our last podcasts. And so, this, so does that kind of speak to this idea that we are going to see builders be able to separate themselves or even have to be super efficient and, and uh, very kind of environmentally friendly going forward? I think it's an expectation. You look at the environment, you look at how millennials are actually influencing companies already, influencing how they're spending, influencing what they're actually offering and supporting that social consciousness. And it, 
just seems like the natural evolution, if you will, of, of the way things are going. I know that you think you think about builders like Thrive Builders out in Colorado who are building a luxury, healthy kind of home for buyers. And people want that experience. They want to be able to say, I'm buying a home and look at what else it's doing for me. Look at what it's doing for me, my family. Look at what it's doing for the environment. I'm not hurting anything by going this direction. Do you think that'll play out in all regions equally though? I mean, I, we don't we put too fine a point on it, but in Colorado, in California, some other places, yes. Do you think that's going to happen in Tennessee and Texas? I think you're seeing a definite shift towards it. it. You do have to be conscious of the regional and even the local market differences because I think about the fact that I'm from Tennessee. I was born and raised in Nashville where – Social environmental consciousness is important, but it's not at the forefront of a lot of decision makings, especially whenever you're thinking about making a big purchase decision like a home. Now, I lived in Knoxville, which is far east Tennessee for the past several years before I moved out to California. And I can tell you that that particular um, region of Tennessee is far more environmentally conscious than Middle Tennessee. And so having sustainability and making sure that the environment is taken care of is really important, much more important, I would think, there than it was in Nashville. Not that it's not important. It's just more prevalent in some markets. Yeah. So you're really going to know, you really need to know your submarket and, and even, even finer than that in some cases. Oh, absolutely. You do need yeah. to be aware of that. And uh, you definitely don't want to go to, you know, I'm trying to think about you know, the most congested city I've ever been. I think New York City, obviously. Um, it's going to be really hard to try to say, hey, look what, I've, look what I'm doing that's different and it's saving the environment because this is a really congested place and you might get drowned out by all the other noise. So, yeah. How, okay. So, how about uh, there's also this kind of, I don't know if it's a myth or not. Well, it's not a myth, but uh, millennials are very tech dependent, very technology oriented. Does it go deeper than that, though, when it comes to home buying? Oh, absolutely. Let me tell you about millennials and technology. They are reliant on technology. This particular group of shoppers, millennials, they are researchers by nature. Okay. Um, More than anything else, they want to be able to go online and find out quite, you know, the answers to any questions they have. Um, To them, technology is part of life. And to actually have a home that includes technology or incorporates that, that makes their life easier, whether it's, you know, something like a smart fridge or even a smart garage or keyless entry, things like that, that just make life easier. Those are going to resonate really strongly with this particular group. Um, This, so for millennials, people who are born in the 80s, they're 44% more likely to buy a product with the latest tech than their parents who were born in the 50s. Hmm. So you think about the, the prevalence of, um, Alexa and Siri, this is just a part of their life. Well, okay, but is there is there personal relations, relationship going to be with their digital assistant or with with real people when it comes to home buying specifically? Are, are, and and are are they still reaching out? Is it friends? Is it realtors? Is it family? What, who who are they looking for? Or are they looking for personal relationships in in the home space? <laughs> Well, they're looking at personal relationships through two different lenses. So when it actually comes to buying a home, they want that personal connection. So, you know, think about the fact that there's so much information that's available online, um, but they also want that personal connection with a person. So we found that, you know, according to our study, that nearly half of our millennials plan on using a realtor for the home buying process. So just because they're going to your website and looking up information or finding information online somewhere doesn't mean that they don't want somebody to help them um, in person. And that's really important, especially when it comes to making big purchases. Remember, we're going back to a group of shoppers who are really big on experience and they want to make sure that they they have that comfort. They have that validation from somebody that actually knows yeah, about the okay. process. And- oh, that, well, that's interesting because it's, so it's not just asking 
um, Kev because Kev's his bro. And sorry, my millennials, my picture of millennials comes entirely from the movie Neighbors. But it, it's not that. They are looking for professionals who know what they're doing and they're going to take that relationship seriously. Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, you know, whenever you're thinking about, you know, the fact that they're going online and they're looking for all of this information, you know, uh, focus on on what's going on online. So if if somebody for example, if another builder has a better online presence, you're going to lose sales. Um, they expect yeah. a great mobile experience and they're more likely to purchase from somebody who gives them that great mobile experience. But we need to make it as tangible as possible, right? That's why they want somebody that knows about the process to help them. And, yeah. um, you know, really, when you're thinking about your digital and online presence, make it consumer centric, make it millennial centric, if that's who you're trying to reach. Um, what's because you have to stop and think about, you know, what's more important to this buyer? Is it, you know, your brand or is it the home they're actually buying? And I can tell you the answer is the actual home. Okay. How, how about in terms of, I mean, We've talked a lot about, is there any other major consideration in terms of, um, you know, this, this idea that they feel entitled? Is it really just that they are very value oriented? Are they very hard headed about this purchase? I think when you're talking about millennial buyers, value is at the core of most millennial purchases. Um, it doesn't matter what category, small or big, value is the driving factor. Um, I know J.D. Power did this incredible consumer insight study on millennials. And what they found was that, you know, value for money is is king. That is the end all and the be all. And under, unlike these other generations who tend to buy things, you know, because of the status it brings them or just blind brand loyalty, um, millennials are the most likely to make their purchase decision based on the value for their money. And when you think about, you know, our national study that we did, you know, again, going back to that idea that, you know, people, you know, these millennials are twice as likely um, to purchase something that has the latest technology that gives them good value for the money that enhances their life. It, it helps their health. It makes things easier, more convenient. They're less likely to care about the brand so much as what they're getting for their money. And it's all about, again, just going back to that lifestyle convenience and the benefits that the purchase has to give them. Okay. Let's talk about then some ways in which millennial home buyers compare and contrast with the, you know, their parents. How are they different from their parents or maybe in some ways not different from their parents? Just, I mean, go for it. What, what, what are some ways that we, we should be educated about how they, how they are different or not different from their previous generations? I think when it comes to the actual home itself, you know, think about the kind of home they want to buy. Um, really want efficiency. They want a smart floor plan, something that's open. Um, they want that seamless indoor, outdoor living, something they can entertain in and comfort and ease. Obviously, everybody wants a little more space than what they have. But again, going back to, you know, they don't want wasted space. They don't want this McMansion that's yeah. out there. Um, they there's a lot of trade-offs that they're willing to make for smaller space. One of them that's really important to consider is uh, millennials will trade off a smaller space. They're three times as likely to consider a smaller lot, if you will, mm -hmm. for the home, um, so long as it reduces their commute time. Hmm. So it's really about location. Location is incredibly important. They, Their time is really valuable to them. So if you're a builder and you have, uh, if you have a small product or if you're building on a small infill project or something like that, you can really target millennials by emphasizing the location of the project that you're working on and saying, hey, 10 minutes. Away. That's a huge, that's a huge point. I actually do a lot of work in the Silicon Valley in California and God, that's, that's just hugely important. If they can, if it's, they'll, they'll absolutely accept density, quite a bit of density in, in a home product. Mm -hmm. If it means they can be relatively close to the mothership and, and mm -hmm. cut down that commute and, and just, and also be amongst the, the kind of environment they want to be. Not to, but I will say this though, when they do hit that live stage where they need to be, uh, have a little more space, they're absolutely willing to go on ridiculous commutes to get that too. Well, and I think you also have to think about if you're a builder, a lot of builders, I think, tend to not really think about beyond the gates of the community that they're building in. But 
Think about the 10 mile radius that's outside of it and all of the amenities that are there. Think about the experience that those home buyers are going to have within 10 miles outside or, of the or, gates of the community. Or 50. And I think, or 50. <laughs> I mean, really? exactly to your point, you know, or even 50. Think about the immediate amenities that are available outside of it. And that's another way to consider positioning whenever they are ready to expand out and get a little bit more space as their families grow, as they naturally do, needing more space. But they are having kids, right? I mean, there's, they're doing these, and are they still? starting to now millennials are starting to do that life stage thing kids family that that the previous generations did a little younger is that fair um, I think that's kind of a, a misconception to a degree uh, more than half of millennials right now have kids um, 22% of millennials will have kids by the time they're 22 and um, 70% have kids by the time they're 39 so you look at the two far you know the the two um, ends of the millennial spectrum, yeah. they've got kids, you okay. know, and, and so that's something else to consider too. It's all, that also leads to the desire for a home that's really practical. Uh, function is really important. Um, style and color are less important than quality and functionality. So when they're looking at that new home, they're literally envisioning what is my life going to be like every day when I wake up? If I'm married and I have kids, I'm going to say, where are my kids going to eat breakfast? Where are they going to go run play when they get home from school? And uh, at the end of the day, though, I mean, still, the, the typical millennial home buyer is going to be dual income, maybe maybe married, maybe not, uh, and well-educated. And that, that's more or less like their parents, isn't it? I think so. I do. I think that it's one of those things where uh, you do have to say that, you know, there's really not a huge <laughs> – people like to draw this line and say, gosh, these guys are so different or we weren't like that. But in all honesty, it's 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 not so different. It's just happening a little bit later down the line. Yeah. You know, they're just a little bit older. Um, they, they do have more education. They put up, you know, a – higher value on that education. And that kind of starts the waterfall of student debt and financial responsibility yeah. and wanting to make sure they're making this right decision. But really, in, in, in all honesty, what it comes down to with millennials is it's all about lifestyle design, um, the expectation that things should be easy in today's day and age. And the fact is, is that if builders don't offer this, um, somebody else will. Um, these buyers have no problem switching to somebody else that, you know, in a heartbeat, that will give them what they want. And what so, their expectations are. So stay on your toes, builders, when it comes to the millennial buyer, or you'll get passed up. Absolutely. And and here's the thing too, you know, stop pretending like millennials don't think about money. Stop pretending like the recession <laughs> didn't happen. These guys are really frugal. Um, you really just have to reach out, make them comfortable about the process um, and embrace the fact that, yes, they're going to go online and get information, but they're also going to have realtors. They're going to check out reviews. They're going to check with other people. They place a lot of value on people. And that's what's important. So they're going to they're going to tell their friends, but they're also going to yelp. Exactly. They're going to check you out on Google reviews. And let me tell you, that's incredibly important. And Are they going to Instagram? Um, <laughs> not so much. for what, <laughs> That might be like a design inspiration kind of thing. Sure. But, you know, whenever it comes to, you know, for in all reality, they really want to find out how you have treated other people like them. And if you okay. think that they're not looking up your name, then – you're crazy. I think it's yeah. really important to have that online, pre like just to have your reviews online and show that, you know, we are taking care of people like you and we can and we will do it for you too. So in a lot of ways, it sounds like, it sounds like, you know, it's a little bit of the, a lot of the same. It's just in different ways, different media, different modes, but it's just, you know, right, right. Reviews used to be in the newspaper ad that have the testimonials. Now they have it online and they have it in, and it's in Google and, and, and things like that, but it's still the same basic idea, isn't it? I think so. I think the one thing that does set them apart, millennials from everyone else, is that it's all about the experience and you have to be cognizant of the experience that you're offering them. You have to give them a good experience, you know, from beginning to end. And that's what really sets them apart. And if you create that experience for them, then even better. You yeah. know, that's that's what sets you apart from everyone else. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sydney. That was our look at our, our, our shot at millennial myth, myth busting without explosions. Science, yes, but consumer science, not, um, you know, chemicals. Hope you enjoyed that. Sydney, please say bye to the folks. Bye. Thank you so much, Dean. Thank you. This is Dean Worley. I'm your host at New Home Insights. Please listen in next time. <laughs>